and then he kills both of us. Oh, we both died! Oh, no! <laughs> Today is our very first playthrough of Slay the Spire, the board game, playing as the Ironclad and the Defect. Join us as we explore this fantastic roguelike deck building game for two to four players. If you need help getting to the starting point of this game, check out our full setup guide, link found above. Let's play this game. Sazaze. Gain three money and a card, then choose an option below. Gain five money, Add a random rare card to your deck or gain a rare card and lose three money? Yep. Rare reward. Reveal three cards from your rare deck rewards. Lay them out in front of you. You may add one to your deck. Return the unselected card to the bottom of your card rewards deck. So I gain three gold. I spend that three gold to get my gold card. So I'm getting, gaining one rare card and one normal card. So for my normal card, I reveal three cards from the top of my deck. I've got Blizzard, Melter, and Fusion. Hmm. I'm going to take Melter as my starter card. Melter removes all armor from the target and then deals that target two damage. The rest of these cards then go on the bottom of my rewards deck. Then I get to draw three rare cards and reveal them. I get to pick one of these. Now these are all really good. So I'll start with Static Discharge as a rare card in my deck. And the other two go to the bottom of my rare rewards. Uh, so I also have gain three gold and a regular card, and then add a rare card to my deck, or gain a card, or remove two cards, lose two HP. All right, I get three money, please. And I am going to remove two cards and lose two HP. So the reason you would remove cards, if you're not familiar with Slay the Spire, is to simplify your deck down and make it so it's more likely you draw stronger cards. So I'm getting rid of two level one defense and a level one strike. Is it remove three cards or two? I'm sorry, two. Two cards. Mm. One of each. One of each. Okay. So she's simplifying down her deck. So those just get removed and put into the box. And the Niao's blessings go away. All right. So the first combat setup. So the start of the game, we take that first encounter deck and we draw from the top and place one in each player's row. So we've got a slime that says add an acid slime and we got a large jaw worm that doesn't have any companions. So we take the summons deck and we find, what is it? An slime. acid slime. One acid slime. And it goes in the same row as the one that summoned it. So the summoning can be seen at the bottom of the card. It will always have a green tag that shows we're summoning that creature. When summoning creatures, take red cubes and place them on their starting HP. Now let's talk a bit about the anatomy of a card. This jaw worm has HP, rewards, a name, and then it has what it does on its turn. So on its turn, you're going to roll dice. And then whichever result the dice comes up as, you roll a single dice. And if it's a one or a two, it does this ability. If it's a three or a four, it does that ability. You have to kind of get a sense of what your opponent is going to be doing to you. So in this case, he's going to gain strength and armor. He's going to deal two damage or three damage. He's much more likely to deal damage than to get that first effect. And he's going to deal two to three damage. B is fighting one that's guaranteed to deal one damage every turn. And then one that's most likely going to deal two damage, but might wound her or daze her. And so we can target either row if we think that one of them is more dangerous. And they will target whoever is in front of them. So at the start of every combat, you take your deck and you reshuffle it. You also reset your energy to three and your block to none. Your hit points will remain whatever level they were at the end of the last encounter. Players can discuss strategy, such as which enemies to attack, which players need help. It is encouraged to announce if you have weak or vulnerable effects, as well as to ask questions like how much damage have you taken or do you have enough block rather than look at a player's hand. All right, start of combat. How many cards do we draw? Five. Each player draws five cards. And there is no maximum hand size. So at the start of combat, I channel one lightning as my passive ability. So my passive here is channel one lightning. So I fill this orb with one lightning orb. You should probably have colored. They are supposed to be colored. Orbs, yep. One yellow orb is lightning. <laughs> That's why there's purple. That's and blue. why there's purple and blue. Yes. Okay. I'm going first. I'm going to cast three strikes. So I have three energy. Sure. And that eliminates this first slime. Okay. 
So three slashes, all three of your energy. She's taking the risk that the other slime is not going to roll a two, or she's willing to just take the two damage. So you're actually supposed to roll the dice before you take your turn, and that way you know exactly what the monsters are going to do. We play this wrong for a couple of turns, but then sort it out. Those strikes go into your discard pile. You are out of energy. I'm going to use one energy to play a defend, one energy to dual cast my lightning orb, and one energy to cast a strike. So I'll gain one block. I will deal one damage to your slime, and then my evoke lightning orb. When invoking lightning, it deals one target two damage. Oh, so, so that I will deal twice. two damage twice and kill the acid. Oh, slime. nice. When players are done playing cards, end of turn abilities happen, and you discard any remaining cards in your hand. All right, so our remaining cards go away, and that is the end of the turn. Then the enemy turn happens. So roll me a dice for the jaw worm for attacking me. That is a six. So it deals three damage. I have one block. So my one block is going to go down, and then I take two damage. Ouch. Ouch. That returns it to our turn. Drawing five new cards. How do you have so many more cards in your deck than I do? Because I added two and you removed two. Right. (laughs) (laughs) So I have to shuffle because I don't have any cards left. So I shuffle these and they go back into my draw pile. So the previous turn hurt a lot. I am going to, on my turn, cast two defense and one melter using all three of my energy to get two block and deal two damage to the jaw worm. I guess I was supposed to go first there. We can go back and forth. It doesn't seem to matter. Yeah. As long as we're only taking one turn. It, it, do we have to be sp- separate, or can you do some moves and then I do some moves as long as we have energy? It says in any order they choose. Play cards, use potion, and activate abilities in any order they choose. So if there is something that I could do that maybe weakens it first. Yeah. Yeah. Something. Okay. Okay. Oh, energy. You gain three energy. At the start of each turn. One, two, three. That's great. I am going to go ahead and use a bash, which weakens it. And weaken makes me deal one extra Plus damage. Plus one damage. Cool. So then, uh, double damage. Double damage. Yeah. Then the boss loses one of those tokens. Okay. Okay. So in this case, it's still, it's only two. Because it was only one damage and the token gets removed. Bringing it down to two HP. All right, so you're out of energy. I'm out of energy. We're done. Roll that thing against me. A one. A one. So it gets two block and a strength. And it goes back to our turn. I have two strikes. That would take out the two shields, but I could just do ah. a zap and double cast. So zap will add me a lightning orb. Double cast will activate that lightning orb twice, dealing two damage and then two damage, removing the two shields and killing it. Dun, 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 dun. So combat is done. Then we get the rewards, I guess. Mm -hmm. How does that work? So. Do you get the reward for your card and I get the reward for my card? I assume that's how it works. Yes. Gain rewards from the enemy in the row you ended combat in. The slimes were in my row. The draw worms were in yours. Okay. So you get one selection of normal cards and a potion. Rewards are on page eight of the rule book. Potion. Draw a potion card from the potion deck. You may gain that potion or skip it. One energy potion. Nice. So now it just comes and adds to my player board. So it says uh, face up until you use it. You cannot have more than three potions. Okay. And then you get one regular card. So flip out three regular cards and choose to take one or skip. A golden ticket. So a golden ticket means that you replace it with one card from your rare pile. Nice. Seven attack. Uh, yeah, please. So she's going to take bludgeon. bludgeon. Cool. And then these go on the bottom. So it's really lucky to get your golden ticket. Yeah. And then my rewards one is gold. one gold, one potion, and one card. So I get my one gold. I get a block potion. Might as well take it. And I get one regular card. So three of these. I've got a streamline, a cool head, and a go for the eyes. Now, I really need more ways to get invocation orbs, so I'm going to take cool head here. Channel of frost orb. The other two go to the bottom of my deck. So now, 
We choose which direction we go in on the map. Yes, all three are question marks. Right. But, but... there are three different paths. <laughs> so looking at the player board, there are events that go different ways. We have to make our way all the way up to the top to make it to the boss. The left side has two elite encounters. That gets us really good rewards, but are more difficult. The middle has a shop that we don't really have the money to deal with. Uh, there's one encounter and one question mark between us and that shop. Are there any shops in any other rows? Way up. In the middle, there's a shop. All three paths could go to that shop. So my risky style of play, I would go left, hit that elite, then go to the middle, hit the other elite, and then hit the shop after the two elites. All right, It's my do it. risky style of play. Let's do it. There's two question marks along the way. Maybe we get something good. Okay. We're Let's going do left. it. Let's do it. We got a question, question mark. mark. Act one. Kachow. Wing statue. You notice an intricate, large, blue statue resembling a wing. You find gold glinting from its cracks. Maybe there's more inside. Pray. Remove a card. Lose 2 HP. Or gather. Gain 2 gold. So, how does this work? Do we both get to do the things? Yes. Event. Draw a card from the event deck. If there is text in yellow brackets, each player must choose one of these options. I'm going to lose... 2 HP and remove a card from my deck. I'm going to remove one of my strikes. I want two gold, please. Can I have two gold? Also, don't forget to use your end of combat ability. Oh, thank you. I heal a health. All right, then we go again. Another question mark. Next up, we get the Wheel of change the wheel of change it's time to spin the wheel are you ready of course you are roll the die each player rolls separately that looks like a four that's a four that's a four it's a four i get a treasure wow nice i get this treasure token the courier the courier once per combat, look at the top card of the potion or treasure deck buy it or discard it nice that's cool. It's pretty cool. That could get expensive. That's a three. That's a three. Remove a card. Nice. Nice. Both really good. I'm going to have such a tiny deck, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get rid of a strike. She's super excited about how small her well, deck is. And I had accidentally uh, threw my discards over here. So oh. I was like, oh, what did I remove? A strike, a defend, and now a strike. So three cards gone. Next Monster. is an encounter. So each of us gets one encounter token? That's... I guess. Other encounters. Draw one encounter per player. So you get to fight a red louse. And I get to fight a cultist. With a spike slime. And so I have a spike slime and you have two other louses. All right. There's a lot more monsters this time. Combat start. We draw our five cards. So cultists every turn get stronger. They start pretty weak and they have nine health. My spike slime can make me vulnerable, daze me, or deal two damage. So on average, I'm going to take two damage on the first turn. I could possibly take three. What's going on in here? There's a lot. They have curl up. The first time they take damage, they get a shield. So if you don't kill them in one hit, they get a shield that then protects them. Correct. Interesting. And they each have different attack values and are kind of all over the place. So the cultist is going to deal one damage and then two damage. And after that, he starts to get out of control. So needing to kill is nine HP rather quickly. So I think I am going to use two defense. Because uh, that damage is coming at me. So that's going to give me two block. And then I'm going to summon a zap, channeling one lightning. And that'll be all of my energy. All right, I will use a bash and weaken the cultist. I guess I will cast one defend on myself as well. Should you use your energy potion for more defense? Because, like, you got one, possibly one, two, three, four, five, yeah, six damage yeah, coming you're at right. you. Okay, okay. Don't be a hoarder. Spend your stuff. Two more defense. Okay, so put your block up to three. It is there. All right. So I've got two block, you got three block. Generally, we should be all right. Discard your remaining cards in your hand. And then they go. So your row first. No, nah, top row first. Top row first? Yep. Okay, fine. So that one deals one damage to me. I take the one block. He gets one strength. 
You roll a second one. Oh, that weaken goes away. That weaken goes away once he takes damage. He hasn't taken damage yet. It's not at the start of his turn the weaken goes no. away? Okay. Two. So two is one damage and then weaken me. We've been saying weaken, but it was vulnerable. Okay. So that was a slime. So now your things. So the first louse. Oh, six. Man. So that is two damage. Two block absorbed. Second louse. Stop it. Six. Two more damage. <laughs> One, two. Third louse. Now we want a six. Four. One damage. One damage. All right. Why do you want a six? You wanted to give it strength? That way it doesn't hit you. Oh, I and guess. then maybe you can one shot it next turn. <laughs> right. Their encounter's done. We draw five new cards. And go back up to three energy. Go back up to three energy. I forgot at the end of my turn. End of turn, deal one damage. Oh, for your lightning? Yeah, so I'm going to hit... Look at the rules. Does shield go away at the end of your turn? An enemy's blocked is removed at the start of the enemy turn. Okay, so on the end of my turn, I blast each of the louses, dealing one damage to each one. Or no, two of them. Two of them. Two of them. So the red one and the green. Yeah. Both those guys. Okay, so they gained so a they shield. Gained shields, and then those shields fall off. That's okay. the smart way to do it. Okay. So we did keep saying weak. The heart symbol is vulnerable, not weakened. Damage from each hit in my next attack is doubled. I destroy him. <laughs> you destroy him. <laughs> so you're killing the cultist in one hit. He is gone. Okay, so then I will deal. T use two of my energy for two strikes, taking out the red louse. And then I will do a cool-headed channeling one frost. Then at the end of my turn, deal one damage, deal one damage, gain one block. So I gain one block, and I take out the green louse. Now, can we look at what axe last means? Oh, he puts the vul he acts last when he rolls that. So if he was first in the row, he doesn't make you vulnerable and then all en other enemies attack you. So one thing we've been doing wrong each round is the start of each turn, you're supposed to roll the dice and those monsters are going to do that ability and you're supposed to be able to react ahead of time to what they're going to do. Gotcha. This is about to be a monster combat. So we rolled the dice and it was a three. So all monsters would act on three. So now they're acting. He attacks for two. He weakens. Oh, he's dead. dead. Yeah. So one damage to me and a daze. I have a block. So my block removes that and I gain a daze card and it goes on top of my deck. So one daze card, unplayable, ethereal. So at the end of my turn, it goes away. But it goes on top of my deck. And my block blocked it. You take two damage. So that'll let us predict what we need to block and have a lot less guessing when we're playing our cards. So I take two damage. Okay, so then it's back to the next turn. We draw our new set of five, shuffle our decks if we have to. So you have to all the time. I have to every time. <laughs> okay, so now we roll the dice. And we know all monsters are doing their two. So he's getting stronger, which means we don't necessarily have to kill him this round. Right. And then the other guy is... Gonna hit us. For one damage. For one damage and add a weaken. Oh, and when he hit me, I had a weaken. How much did he hit you for? One. So it was two. So it's two. So I take one damage. Four. I'm hurting. All right. I'm just going to bludgeon again. So you're killing that slime? I kill that slime. He can't hurt you anymore. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> this louse has not done curl up yet. So this has a lot of done curl up yet. So I'm going to play Static Discharge. This is a power using two of my energy going down to one. This is a power that stays in play and makes my lightning orb effects one stronger. Get plus one. That's one more damage, right? Yeah. And then I'm going to cast a Melter on him, dealing two damage, and then he gains two block. Then at the end of my turn, one lightning strikes him with the Static Discharge for two, and then the second lightning hits him for two and kills him. So that's it? Yes. Okay. We killed all of them. And took not too much damage. We did all right. Which all right. All right. This Ethereal goes away. And we get our rewards. So you get one gold and a card. You're so rich. Two shield to any player. Two attacks. Or three attacks and exhaust a card in your hand. Now, that could be really good later. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take Sever Soul. I get one gold, a potion. Change the die to any number before accepting the roll. 
And one card. My deck's getting pretty thick, but I want a cold snap, so I'm going to take it. Gain your one health for end of combat. Do you feel like we can take on a elite encounter? Ooh, uh, I think we need to heal up. And we're pretty far away from any campfires. So let's do it. Elite encounter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Risk it, So move says. us up to that elite encounter. And we draw. How does this work? Okay, place one elite in the bottom row. If there are summons, place them in each player's row with the elite to their right. No summons. Excellent. With the Legavulin, he has his second number is 44. So in a two-player mode, he starts at 44 health. He has a rotational set of actions. So he goes through the same set of rotations. So his cube starts at the gray spot of Sleepy. He starts sleeping and will not do anything in the first round. In the second round, he's going to hit both of us for four. Then hit both of us for four, and then weaken both of us and become stronger. And then he'll go to the top, and so every round he's going to do that rotation, and we know what he's going to do each round. Uh, it does say the bottom player always goes first. Oh, where did you see that? Um, If simultaneous turns don't work for your group. We can work together. We're a good group. So we want to do any damage that we can and any setup that we can right now when we know he's not going to do anything. We don't need to defend. Well, I have this fancy card that I just keep playing. So you're just going to smack him? I'm going to smack him. Unless you have a weaken first. I don't weaken. All right. Well, then. So you're spending all three of your energy to do seven of his 44 health, putting him down to 37. I am going to... Zap and Static Discharge with my three energy, gaining me another Lightning Orb and powering up my Lightning Orbs for the rest of the game. Then at the end of my turn, both of my Lightning Orbs zap him for two damage each for four damage. We discard our hands because we are both at zero energy. So he goes and he sleeps. He is now awake and we know he's going to hit both of us. That's what this red symbol means. He hits all active players. So we know he's going to hit all of us, and he's going to hit us all for four damage. We draw our five new cards and begin our second phase. So if we can get vulnerable on him, and then you next turn do your big smash, oh, yeah. it'll be double, mm -hmm. right? Right. So we want me to go first and not waste your thing. Now, do you think vulnerable works with lightning orbs? So on page 24, it does confirm that damage effects aren't hits and hits exclusively use vulnerable so the evocation of my orbs does not trigger vulnerable so i'm going to strike him with one energy and then use two energy for two defense and i'm going to drink my block potion to gain two more defense putting me at four defense uh, i will spend my two energy bash and weaken him and one defense. Uh, I don't need that. I need this. Okay. Discard your remaining cards. And he goes. So he strikes both of us for four damage. Ouch. I have four block, so I go down to zero. And you take three damage. I do. I am at three health. At the end of oh, at the end of my turn, I blast him for two four. Twenty-eight. Kay. And I Heal one. Oh, at the, the end, end of, of combat, combat, not each turn. Reduces orb down. He is on turn three. And draw your five new cards. Restore to three energy. Hey, look at this fancy card I got. Bludgeon. You want to do 14 damage to him? I sure do. You're going to die, though. What? Okay. Do your 14 damage. He's at 14 health. Courier. Once per combat, look at the top card of the potion deck. I will gain it and spend two money. I will drink that potion to gain a might. So strong. So strong. Then I will use a melter to deal two plus one. Three damage. A strike to deal two damage. 
and a double cast to evoke one of my orbs twice for four damage. Come on, it's at any health. That it removes my orb. I'm out of energy. So sad. So I can end my turn and deal him two damage with my remaining lightning orb. You're the real MVP. And then he kills both of us. Oh, we both died. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I only had one block in my hand. <laughs> bom, bom, bom. So that is, that is our first playthrough of Play This Fire. Taking the risky route could definitely go that way. I didn't expect him to have 44 health. That was a lot to deal with. That's all, folks. <laughs> Good first playthrough. Let's Good try again. We're going to try it again. We'll give you a second playthrough video later, but you are going to be able to enjoy this first playthrough video now. So I hope you had a fun time watching us get our butts kicked in our first game of Slay the Spire. We're going to re-roll and try again, as roguelike games are. Yeah, that's, how it goes. that's it. We're Sazaze Games, and we'll catch you guys next time.